When considering forces, it's also important, and I think useful, to talk about free body diagrams. So what do I mean by those? Well, it's going to be a diagram showing an object and showing some forces acting on an object. So free body diagrams are going to imply something about forces. So we could have one example. Let's say something is still. So let's say something is, you know, not moving. Well, if it's not moving, then let's maybe draw that object. So it could be something really boring. Usually, you know, textbooks have the world's most boring example. It's usually just like a box just sitting there. It could be me sitting in my chair right now as I'm speaking to you, and I've got my butt sitting in a chair, so there we go. So this is me, or this could be a box on a, you know, on a floor. It's all the same thing. What we do for free body diagrams, we draw forces. So what we do is, uh, well, a force is a vector. So because a force, maybe I'll write that down. So force is a vector. So uh, we draw arrows to represent the force. And we often label them. So for example, if this is a box and it's sitting still on the ground. Well, I know there's one force acting on it. The force that's acting on everything on Earth is a straight downwards force. And I'm going to label it F and maybe put a little subscript G. That's going to represent you know, the gravitational force. Okay, so that right there is going to be gravitational force. Now, some people like to write it in different ways. That's okay. But this is gravitational force going down. But in a free body diagram, it turns out it's all about how these forces are balanced or not. And it turns out if there was only one force acting on this thing, it turns out that one force only means that we would have what we call an unbalanced force. You see that this thing right here, then if it only feels an arrow going down, then it's going to accelerate downwards. It turns out forces and accelerations are related. We're going to learn that later on in Newton's second law. But it turns out an unbalanced force leads to an acceleration. In other words, it leads to you sort of speeding up. So if this thing was sitting on the ground, there was only a gravitational force, well then it would be actually flying downwards. It would be going downwards and accelerating. It's clearly not. It's sitting on a table or on a floor. So if that's the case, there must be some force that's acting opposite to gravity. So I'm going to draw it. Now, uh, by the way, free body diagrams, we often draw the forces coming from the center of mass of the object. So in this case, if it's a little box, I'll draw the arrows emanating or sort of coming out of the very center. So from this right here, I'd better have a force going upwards, and it turns out this force should be exactly the same length as this one. And that force we're going to call Fn. N is going to stand for the normal force. This may sound weird, but I mean, even if you're just standing on the ground, if you're standing on the ground, yes, your body feels a downwards gravitational force, but the fact that you're not sort of accelerating downwards means that the ground is also giving you a force going exactly upwards. And it turns out those two will be balanced out. They'll be equal and opposite. Now, it's possible for these forces not to be, opposite, uh, not to be equal and opposite. So then we say we have an unbalanced force, and it turns out we're going to learn that if you have an unbalanced force, then you have an acceleration. But let's look at another example, because you don't just have to be still. You can still be moving. So something can be moving, and it all depends on if there are uh, balanced forces or not. But let's just say um, maybe I'm in a plane. Oh god, now I'm going to try to draw an airplane, and I'm a really bad artist, so you're about to see why. So maybe this is my little Cessna airplane here, so I guess it goes a little bit like this. And then, uh, well, it's got its wings going this way, and that sort of goes down like this, and then it has a tail here, and then it's got its little uh, horizontal stabilizer there, and then this, well, it just sort of goes straight like this, and it's got a little landing gear here and two there and it's got a nice propeller here of course this is where I sit if I'm flying the airplane uh, this is a really bad airplane but oh well you get the idea so in this airplane it turns out if I'm flying through the air then I've got forces acting on me here well the plane does so let's assume that right in the center here that's the center of gravity let's just uh, assume that that's the case 
If the center of gravity is right here, then, well, it's, this plane is still going to feel a downwards gravitational force. Uh, but let's, let's assume it's actually moving at a constant speed. It turns out it can do that. It can still be moving constant speed. That means it's going to be, whoops, well, I made that look like a, a not very straight line, actually. I'll try that again. So I'll try to draw a, oh, that's not really any better. So let's say this here could be F, and maybe I could call that lift. Turns out the wings are going to be generating lift. Some people say it's through the Bernoulli effect, uh, if you've ever learned about aerodynamics, but it turns out most of it is due to displaced air. So if you're sort of throwing air downwards, it turns out you're going to go upwards. So we're going to have a force of lift in your plane. And if this upwards force of lift is exactly equal to and opposite the downwards force of gravity, then your plane is at least not going to go up or down. It's just going to be flying straight and level. And maybe I have a forward force. Maybe this force could be F, I could call it uh, thrust. Turns out in aerodynamics, at least, we often say the forward force. So this is due to the propeller. It turns out the propeller, what it's doing is it's turning through the air, and it's actually causing air to be displaced and moving the air to the right. It turns out through Newton's third law, then, uh, there's an action and reaction pair, and that means you feel a forwards force. If only these three forces were acting, then this plane would not be going up or down, but it would be accelerating forward. Well, if I want it to be at constant speed, then maybe I'll have an exactly, you know, equal and opposite to the thrust. I'll call this, uh, it's often called drag. So the drag force. This is due to air resistance and all sorts of other factors here. So let's say this could be something, so this is a free body diagram of my plane going at a constant speed. Over here, these uh, arrows here represent a free body diagram showing the forces acting on this still object. And we can draw free body diagrams for anything. The key is to think about what are the forces acting on that thing, and what direction do those forces go. You could have all sorts of weird things, like what if you have something at an angle? So let's say you have, I don't know, some sort of incline like this right here. And then you have, uh, let's say I'm riding on a sled or something. Well, I'm Canadian, so we like to go around on sleds. So let's say this right here is me. So there's my legs, and I guess I've got my arms here. I'm holding on to a little thing right here, and I'm sort of, you know, zooming along down the hill here. Well, apparently I'm floating above the uh, thing right here. So let's just say I've got my legs here. So I'm just flying down. I've got a big smile on my face because I'm going down the hill. Well, if I'm on my sled here, well, we can look at what forces are acting on me there. And on this sled, well, the center of gravity of me and my sled, we're going to feel a straight downwards gravitational force. And the normal force is actually going to be like this. If you look, this right here will be unbalanced. It turns out you can, you can sort of work out um, which component of this force right here is actually going to be sort of opposite to the normal force and then you can actually figure out then that, okay there's going to be a downwards component so that makes uh, or a forwards component and that means i'm actually going to accelerate in this case right here this is not balanced i've got an unbalanced set of forces here see they're not canceling each other out and that means that i'm going to accelerate so i'm not just going to go at a constant speed i'm likely going to be accelerating unless I have some friction here. Maybe I have friction going backwards, so maybe I could draw F, you know, friction or something. Then it is possible for now these forces actually to cancel out. So I might have my backwards friction force equal to the forward component of this. So sometimes it gets a bit complicated with the angles here, but you can still work it out. And it's all about drawing free body diagrams and drawing these different arrows and where they go. So. That's just a more complicated example. But it turns out you can just draw free body diagrams just by considering the forces and having them emanate or sort of come from the center of mass of the object. And we can use this. It's a very powerful way to figure out what happens in physics situations.